Good afternoon. Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Press Briefing. I have a few items at the top and then open it up for your questions. First, Secretary Kerry will travel to New York on Friday, September 19th to chair a ministerial debate of the United Nations Security Council on Iraq as part of the U.S. Presidency of the Council for the month of September. Secretary Kerry will convene the Council to demonstrate broad and unified international support for the new Iraqi government and emphasize the need for broad political inclusivity as the new government pursues its agenda on behalf of the Iraqi people. In addition, the Council session will also provide a platform for the international community to underscore its support for Iraq's new government as it fights against ISIL and responds to the ongoing humanitarian crisis that ISIL is spreading. Lastly, the Council session will highlight support for Iraq's further reintegration into the region and the international community. The debate will begin at 2 p.m. on Friday. Secretary Kerry will return to New York on Sunday, September 21st to begin his UNGA schedule, uh, which we'll have more details on later this week. Second item at the top. The United States does not recognize the legitimacy of the so-called regional and local elections in Crimea on September 14th and will not acknowledge their outcome. Our position on Crimea remains clear. The peninsula remains an integral part of Ukraine. The United States continues to condemn the Rus Russian Federation's occupation and purported annexation of Ukrainian territory and its violation of Ukrainian sovereignty and territorial integrity in breach of its obligations and commitments under the UN Charter, the Helsinki Final Act, and its military basing agreements with Ukraine. We call on Russia to return Crimea to its rightful status as part of Ukraine. We are also concerned about wide-scale reports of Ukrainian citizens in Crimea being forced to give up their Ukrainian passports for Russian passports and reports of routine human rights abuses against Crimean Tatars and other minorities and pro-Ukrainian activists, such as killings, disappearances, detentions, and raids on private homes and businesses. These abuses are unacceptable, and we call for an immediate end to such practices. And finally, a trip update. Secretary Kerry is in Paris today, participating in the International Conference on Peace and Security in Iraq. Additionally, he will had, or has already had, obviously schedules ongoing, bilateral meetings with French Foreign Minister Fabius, the Lebanese Foreign Minister, the Dutch Foreign Minister, uh, Iraqi President Massoum, and Qatari Foreign Minister al -Atiyah. That is it. Okay. Get us started. Okay. Uh, let's start with Iraq. Um, okay. And just first with a uh, logistical question about the meeting on Friday. Uh -huh. is, that, uh, is it your expectation that that will be foreign ministers, all foreign ministers? Uh, or I can check on that? participation. I know that's still being worked out. Obviously, he's chairing it, but we can check on, on specific participation and at what level. Okay. And then, uh, and then related to that, that, so he will leave New York or he will definitely not have any schedule on Saturday until New York. Someday, some, sometime on Sunday. Correct. Yes. We right? don't want people to think he's up there Friday for the duration. Okay. All right. So on, um, on Iraq and the coalition and Secretary Kerry's travels, I, I mm -hmm. realize that this has been going on. It was a lengthy discussion of this at the White House, so I think that a lot of questions have been answered. Or Great. They, I will always been, let them uh, go out to the right. podium first. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you, you saw this, uh, these reports from Iran mm -hmm. with the Supreme Leader. He said when he left the hospital that both your ambassador in Baghdad, Ambassador Beecroft, and... Secretary mm -hmm. made direct outreaches, made outreaches to Iranian, well, uh, the ambassador to the Iranian ambassador and Secretary Kerry to Foreign Minister Zarif mm -hmm. about the situation in Iraq. Is that uh, in Iraq? Yeah. <clears throat> with 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 ice ice ISIL. Um, is that is, is one? Is that true? And two, if it is, even if it isn't true. Um, can you, have there been what kind of contacts have there been other than the ones that you have already mm -hmm. spoken to between um, Deputy Secretary Burns and um, others on the side of the mm -hmm. P5 plus one? Well, uh, we don't outline every diplomatic discussion publicly that we have. We've said we've talked about it on the sidelines of the P5 uh, plus one talks, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, we'll be continuing these talks on the nuclear issue starting this week at UNGA, so there may be additional opportunities for conversations. We're not going to outline every discussion we have, but to be very clear, uh, we are not coordinating with, we do not want to coordinate with, we will, are not planning to coordinate with, 
Iran uh, in any way on Iraq, period. So obviously we're open to having a discussion with them. We won't always outline all of those discussions. Um, but in terms of the content of what those discussions might look like, we are not coordinating with them. And there has been no approach to them either in – there has been no approach to them in Baghdad through the ambassadors? I'm not confirming one way or the other any right. reports of contact. As we've said, uh, there are a variety uh, of well, ways we can talk, but again, don't always outline all of those. But what probably. you're saying is that any contact that you have had and may have in the future mm -hmm. will not be an ask of Iran. Correct. Is that right? Absolutely correct. Okay. Not coordinating is different than not asking them something. Well, he um, was he was, but the the reports were about asking to coordinate. Right. Correct. So that's what I. Was Secretary of State personally asked Zarif, and he rejected the request. So, so, so there's nothing that Iran. You, you there's no, in these meetings they haven't been set up so that Iran. You're expecting a response, yes or no, from Iran. Is mm -hmm. that correct? We're certainly not discussing coordinating with them because we're not going to be coordinating. Well, with them. the question is: Is there anything for the Iranians to say no to? I have. I mean, I, I don't even know. I'm sure they could. Say well, they no to say. Something. I mean, he <laughs> says. He says no. We we said no from right from the start. U.S. asked through its ambassador whether we would cooperate against Daesh. And I just said we are not, not. going to cooperate. So, there so isn't, obviously that would follow that we haven't asked them. To. Right, okay. So there is nothing for the Iranians to say no to. Well, not necessarily. If we say hypothetically, as I said publicly, we'd like you to support the inclusive oh, okay. government. All right. I guess then. As far as you understand, technically that could be the Iranians. As far as you know, the Iranians have at least gone along with supporting an inclusive government. Uh, I haven't heard otherwise. Right. Yeah. Well, I sorry, just wanted Russia. to be clear on that. Piece, yep. what is, can you explain what you're talking to them about if you're not talking about coordinating against IS? What, what are you, what are you, and you're not asking them to do anything? Mm -hmm. What are you talking to them about? Well, I, I've actually said publicly that we're asking every country in the region to support the new, including Iran, to support the new inclusive government in Iraq. Uh, to channel any assistance to the Iraqi security forces, not to militias or others. Uh, again, I'm not saying these are actual uh, things we've said privately to the Iranians, but in general, what I've said publicly is that is our message to the Iranians. So, but then, but then, what what are you asking them if that's your if that's your message to the Iranians? Are you, are you not saying that to them in private? Too? Well, I'm not going to outline our private discussions with them from the podium. So you can't tell us what you've actually discussed with them privately. All you can say is that you're not going to coordinate with them and you're not asking them to coordinate. Correct. But there's a lot you could do other short of coordinating like what? with them. Well, I mean, you outlined some of it. You talked about even if you're not coordinating with them, you're asking them not to, you know, uh, fund Iraqi militias. Is that coordination or is that not coordination? I guess in your definition it's not coordination? Well, I didn't say we were asking them that privately. I said in general what I've said publicly is our message to the Iranians is everyone in the region should, should support this new government. That's not a secret. Right. Um, that everyone should funnel their support to the Iraqi security forces. I think the report Matt is referencing is a report about coordinating military action which we have been very clear we are not going to do. And we're not coordinating with the Iranians on activities inside of Iraq. We're making clear privately what we say publicly. And so, they can make their own decisions. Okay, so you are making clear privately what you've said publicly and what you just referenced about what you've said publicly about your mm -hmm. desire that they not fund, that nobody fund... I'm not fund. getting into specifics, but that we, but, think every we think every country should support the Iraqi security forces if they're going to provide support in this fight here. But you're not willing to say that you've said that privately, even though you just said we're saying to them privately what we're saying publicly? I, w I, I just said, Arshad, that I'm happy to say we are telling everyone we talk to, including the Iranians, that any support should be given to the new government and to the Iraqi security forces. And that is as detailed as I'm going to get about what we say privately to the Iranians. If, 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 uh, if the report is wrong, that they have rejected your entreaties or you're floating the idea of some kind of cooperation. Because we haven't. So why not try to give people some understanding of what you're trying to get from them? Because we don't think uh, the way to handle this diplomatically is to talk about our private discussions publicly. Yes, yes let's go around the room. Go ahead, and then I'll go to you. Go ahead. Khamenei and the Secretary General of the National Security Council, they raised their criticism against the coalition, and they are saying the way to fight ISIL is, should go through the, Ira the Iraqi government and the Syrian government, the Assad regime. What do you well, say to that? Well, everything we do when it comes to Iraq is completely coordinated with the Iraqi government and is at the invitation of the Iraqi government. 
So I would use that first to describe what we're doing in Iraq. But in Syria, uh, President Assad has lost all legitimacy uh, to lead Syria. We are not, uh, you know, going to be working with the Assad regime or, or to be sharing our plans with them as we haven't in the past, as you know. Uh, because we think uh, that the people we're going to be working with are the moderate opposition in Syria. That's who we think is the uh, alternative to ISIS. That's who we uh, want to increasingly support, but we're not going to be working with the regime. Yes, yes go ahead. Just the, for the first topic that you raised, mm -hmm. do, which means that you are not coordinating with Iran, Correct. as publicly we mm -hmm. said, uh, does, does, does this mean that you don't object or you object any coordination going on between Iraqi government and Iran? Well, the Iraqi government can make its own decisions, obviously, about who it works with. And we've said any support needs to be channeled to the Iraqi government, as long as that is uh, support uh, to the new inclusive government, to a better path forward, to a non-sectarian path forward. So obviously, they can make their own decisions about who they work with, as long as it's towards that end is something I think we would be fine with. So. In this case, which is ISIL, ISIS and the new government, mm -hmm. do you know or do you expect that that Iraqi government, with its nature, with close three ties with Tehran, are they going to make any coordination with them? And if they are going to coordinate with them, are, it, are they supposed to tell U.S. about it or not? Well, I let the Iraqis speak for themselves. But I think, broadly speaking, one important point that came out of particularly the meetings in Jeddah is the extent to which the new Iraqi government is coordinating with its Arab uh, partners in the region. Uh, going to Saudi Arabia to meet with all of these countries to talk about working together, uh, reports that you know, the Saudis may be sending an ambassador back to Baghdad soon, coming out of the Saudi foreign ministry. Uh, we're seeing a level of cooperation between the Iraqi government and other Arab Gulf states that, that I think we hadn't seen in a long time. So when it comes to who's, you know, part of this regional coalition, that really uh, is going to be an important piece. So we, can we say that from what you said about this position, it, that what you are expecting from Tehran is just to support what was done? what's going on with by Iraqi government, not more than that? Well, I'm not outlining anything further for you. Obviously, we believe that ISIL is a threat to Iran, as it is to all countries in the region. Uh, and we know the Iranians believe that. So again, we're not going to be coordinating with them. And we think anyone who has influence in Iraq, which the Iranians clearly do, uh, should use that to support uh, this new government, to support their security forces in this fight, and not try to support their security or stability in other ways. Okay, two questions. Uh, I just hear like earlier uh, that there are like I, that ISIS has like twelve hostages, uh, American hostages, or captives. Like uh, we've said, a small number of Americans. I would dissuade you from the number twelve. Okay. Uh, the other question is: Have you requested uh, a budget for the coalition, like from the Congress? Uh, well, that's, uh, that's not the way the coalition, I think you should think about the coalition. Uh, the coalition is really a broad-based, holistic one. I think people tend to think of military options only when they think of a coalition. But it's going to include other countries, you know, cutting off uh, funding to ISIL, helping to stem the flow of foreign fighters. Uh, those are things we don't need a congressional budget for. We need other countries to step up to the plate and help. So obviously that's uh, a conversation we're having with those other countries now. But, but the U.S. is like running uh, airstrikes there and... Now it's in moving Iraq. to another, yeah, mm -hmm. moving into another phase. So, do you still like go on the same way, like with the budget? I mean, is there, or are you going to ask? Well, like, I'm not aware of additional budgetary requirements, except for the uh, train and equip mission in terms of the moderate opposition in Syria that we've asked Congress for funding for the Department of Defense to conduct uh, that train and equip mission. So that's obviously a piece of funding that's we think key to this effort. Uh, I'm not aware of other budgetary needs, but obviously we're having an ongoing conversation with Congress about how they can support this effort uh, going forward. But uh, that's all. That's the only budget issue at this point that I'm aware of. Thanks. Yes. Three very short uh -huh. clarifying things. Okay. One, your colleague at the White House, Mr. Ernest, said referred to in the, discuss the discussions are referred to uh, discussions with Iran as back channel discussions. Back by back channel. Is he referring to the burns or the, the, the ones I, that you've I'm, talked I'm about? I'm guessing. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm guessing, which aren't really back channel. No, right. Anymore. But that's what <laughs> but that's what he was talking about. Yeah, I think he means back channel mm -hmm. in terms of the fact that the meeting was arranged for something else, the nuclear talks. And they used but, to be back channel talks, as you well, remember. Well, right. Yes. Yeah. But uh, secondly, um, Jen, earlier this morning, said um, 
you know, pointed out that the P5 plus one talks are going to resume again yes. this this week and presumably next, they'll yes. go into next week. So, but yes. Wait, well, I can give an update on that. All right. Go ahead. But, um, and then she said there may be another opportunity on the margins mm -hmm. in the future to discuss Iraq. She's referring to this upcoming Correct. set of meetings. She so, is. So you would expect there to be, to use Josh Ernest's phrase, some more back channel <laughs> discussions on the sidelines of the uh, on, on the on the margins of the I P5 think plus there's one a good Iraq. chance there will be given obviously so much of UNGA is going to be focused on Iraq and ISIL we do start uh, beginning on the 18th uh, we will all be headed to New York for the next round of the P5 plus one talks they are right. scheduled to go through the high level week so I have a suitcase packed for a week and a half okay that um, means the 27th mm -hmm. 28th yep around that time I think the 27th is Saturday but I don't have an exact date, but uh, there will be, as there always are, a variety of meetings, including uh, plenary sessions, yeah. coordination meetings, bilaterals, all of the above. All right. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Speaking of Congress, uh, arming and training of the moderate Syrian rebels, mm -hmm. this uh, budget, uh, there are reports that it looks like it's going to postpone after the mid uh, elections. What is your view on, on Well, that? I'd refer you to congressional leadership, but I think we're still hopeful uh, that we can get, we, the administration, not the State Department, what? can get the funding uh, done before they leave. Uh, we heard, we've heard members of Congress talk quite a bit about how important they think this effort is, and they should put their vote uh, where their words are, and hopefully we can get it done. So since there are credible reports that this vote might be postponed. I'm what? not sure they're credible, but continue. From political, I don't know. Uh, so what does it mean, do you think, if it's postponed to, uh, after the mid-election? Well, I, I don't, again, I, I, I don't know how accurate those are. We think this needs to happen as soon as possible, and I've heard a lot of members of Congress come out very strongly and talk about the importance of this effort and how it needs to be done quickly. And again, holding this off until after the midterm elections, I think, uh, would set this effort back even further. This is something the President first proposed in May. So, again, this is an effort we think should move forward as soon as possible. You don't have to lay out, but do you have an alternative plan if this doesn't uh, pass through Congress? I, I don't have any other uh, assessment on that for you. And one last thing. Mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, you, you, you stated today several times that uh, ISIL uh, presents a serious uh, threat to Iran as mm -hmm. well as others. Uh, I, I uh, asked this question several times over the last few months that your own Treasury Department in February identified operatives in Tehran within the knowledge of the Iranian government that funded and facilitated fighters, Al-Qaeda affiliated groups in Syria. Are you going to, uh, from this podium or in your uh, uh, talks with the Iranians, are you going to address this? Uh, I'd, I'd refer you to Treasury for any designations they made, uh, and obviously I don't have more details for you uh, on any private discussions with the Iranians. I would say that they recognize this is a threat, uh, certainly. Uh, they've said so publicly, and I think I'd let them speak for themselves. Assad regime says the same thing. Assad, you identified Assad regime as key factor uh, in terms of uh, uh, ISIL mm -hmm. becoming much more Correct. a bigger threat. Mm -hmm. And the Assad regime says the same thing, that is a big threat to well, themselves. Well, I wouldn't compare them to the Iranians. You don't? Okay. No. Um, the definitions in this building and in, at the White House about what constitutes a act of coordination seems to have been kind of nebulous. There doesn't seem to be a... That's true. Okay, well then, can you provide a definition of what counts as Working coordination? Working together or working in tandem or telling each other what we're going to be doing and coordinating those activities with each other before we do them. So does that mean if the United States is in a position where it could give a heads up to Iran about, because, you know, we've we've discussed in this room and at the White House that there are issue, issues of mutual interest between the United States mm -hmm. and Iran. So it stands to reason that some of those issues of mutual interest might be uh, where ISIS is presenting the biggest threat at any given well, moment. We're not so, going to be sharing intelligence with them either. Okay, but I mean that may not be actual intelligence. That could just be movements on the ground that are which would come from where besides intelligence that are just being on the ground. No, I mean Iran has forces on the ground as well. So okay. it would stand to reason that they both would both be observing changes on the ground. So you're saying that there would be no conversations 
of those kinds to get a sense of what's going on. You're correct. You've ruled out completely the idea that that we will be working together to fight ISIL. I guess I'm just wondering where's the where's the line drawn between working together and discussing issues of mutual interest. To me, that seems like a distinction without a difference. Well, I think they're completely different things. Obviously, we've made clear what our position is in Iraq. We're not going to be telling the Iranians what we're doing. We're not going to be coordinating actions with them. We're not going to be sharing intelligence with them. We've made clear how people can be helpful. But again, we're not going to be coordinating with them. And I'm not sure how much more we can say about that. Yes. Regarding this uh, Secretary Kerry trip, trip to mm -hmm. Middle East countries and in particular raising the issue of uh, how moderate, let's say, moderate Islam is looking to this ISIL issue or ISIS issue. Mm -hmm. Do you expect any I mean, more strategic approach to what's the so-called public diplomacy to explain exactly what this war is? If you want to, if you, I don't know if you call it a war or not. I did on Friday. Yeah, okay, that's mm -hmm. fine. So it's the, uh, be, especially because it was mentioned on the trip to Egypt, it was official, uh, was quoted that it's, uh, he will ask the Azhar to play a role in moderate mm -hmm. Muslims regarding this extremism. Right. Why, okay, go well, ahead. Go ahead. Read no, no, I'm just right. trying to figure out because I have a follow-up question. For okay. You. Well, a key part of this coalition and what we need people to do is to delegitimize, de excuse me, uh, ISIL's ideology. And obviously it's not always or ever the United States that's best at doing that. It's moderate Muslim voices in the region. It's people like the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia standing up and saying, this group does not represent Islam. Uh, it's leaders in the region. It's people all over the region, quite frankly, who can stand up and say this. So that's a key part of this coalition and what needs to happen. Uh, it's an effort we certainly have resources that we can put towards as well. Uh, particularly when it comes to radicalization or potential radicalization inside the United States, not, not at the State Department, but at our, my uh, partner uh, domestic agencies who focus on counter-radicalization efforts in vulnerable communities, where we know there is a foreign fighter challenge, uh, places we've had people uh, leave to go overseas uh, and join terrorist groups. So the question is, because yes, whether you like it or not, the first two letters of ISIS is Islamic State, and it is used in media whether most of the Western world as mm -hmm. an Islamic state showing, do, doing this and that. How you are going to handle this issue, especially in, in this war of perceptions, which is the reality, mm -hmm. is like foreign policy is a big part of its perception, and then again, whether we like it or not, the other side is saying that, okay, the West again is trying to whatever, confront Islam or Islamic state. Well, I think a few points. First, uh, the most important voices in speaking up are, as I said, Muslim voices, particularly religious leaders, who've said this does not represent Islam. Uh, the president was, was clear in his speech last week when he said, you know, ISIS is, n is neither Islamic nor is it a state. So they may try to use that language to describe what they're doing, but quite frankly, they are neither and not recognized as either by people around the world, including in the region. So you're right. If I, if I could call them something else, I wish I could. Um, that's what they've chosen to call themselves, but part of our job, and really part of this coalition's job, uh, part of Iraqi's job, people in Syria, people who are most at threat from this, is to stand up and say, these people don't represent us. And so this is not about a fight with Islam. This is about m people in the region standing up and saying, this does not represent who we are, and standing together. And we will stand with them to fight this threat, but I want to be very clear about how we're viewing the threat. So from your perspective, or let's say from your understanding now, mm -hmm. these countries in the Middle East are cooperating on this front or just their cooperation is concentrated on, let's say, military or security side? Well, we're asking them to cooperate on a whole host of fronts. Obviously, part of it is the security piece and what that looks like, uh, but part of it is the ideology piece. You're absolutely right. To stand up and say um, these people are, are putting forward this grotesque version uh, of what they're calling Islam, which is not Islamic, and that we need credible voices to stand up and say that. And we've seen a lot already, which I think uh, has shown the rest of the world exactly what, uh, what we're working with here. So just one, the last one. Mm -hmm. You asked them, but did they respond, or they are responding properly or not? Well, we ask broadly. I, I don't want to I don't want to indicate that people like the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia where people were going to and asking to do this. Many, if not all, of these statements come out organically. 
we are saying very publicly, if you, if anyone around the world can play a role in pushing back on this ideology, pushing back on what they're saying it is, this isn't a specific ask that the United States wants. This is what we think is most important in fighting ISIS. So this is something they're deciding to do on their own, uh, not at the ask of the United States, because they believe it's important to say publicly. Yeah. Well, Matt. I'm assuming that you have the same response that the White that you, Mr. Ernest had at the White House when he was asked about the reports that some of the moderates in Syria have at least, if not joined or affiliated themselves with ISIS. Those are not true. Have. Okay, so yes. I, I won't ask you to repeat it if you're going to say, well, you, maybe I, I was go ahead and do it because I'm sure you don't know, you might not know what I you I actually said. haven't seen his briefing. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, the Syrian Opposition Coalition said on Saturday that, quote, not a single U.S. vetted rebel group has entered into a tru with, truce with ISIL. The Free Syrian Army affirmed to us that there is no ongoing truce between FSA elements and ISIL. Uh, furthermore, the Syrian Revolutionaries Front issued a statement Sunday confirming it had ever participated in any ceasefire with ISIS. So, again, I would back down those reports wholeheartedly. So okay. Okay, which yes. means that you're not concerned about the reports. However, you would no. be concerned if such a thing were, in fact, happening. But we yes. don't think it is. Right. Yeah. Uh, secondly. But that's um, why we vet people, too. Right. Yeah. Um, in terms of the coalition, there's been a lot of criticism, uh, I guess unsurprisingly, um, coming from, at least coming from some quarters, that this is kind of a phantom coalition. It doesn't really exist. I'm mm -hmm. wondering, I want to ask you today about not what people – not what countries are not doing, but countries that are doing and have announced. Mm -hmm. Other than the Australians saying that they're going to send uh, planes and I think 600 troops to UAE and what you guys are doing and the French saying that they're prepared to um, do mm -hmm. military strikes. And I'm only talking about the military side here. Yep. Okay. But can we I'm include in the military side the countries that have uh, pledged resupply to particularly the Kurds and the Iraqi security forces? That's been ongoing sure. for the past few weeks, and that's a bunch of other countries. Resupply, Anything arms. having to do with things that go bang. Yeah, and I'm there's a number about. of countries that have so pledged to do that with the Iraqi can security you, forces. Can, can you we – can, can we, we have a full list I think we sent out last on Friday, but we can get it around to you again today, of other countries who've said they will supply the Iraqis. But that's been ongoing. With, with military stuff, uh -huh. with military hardware. Yeah, particularly yeah. with some of the resupply they need. Okay, yeah. I missed it on Friday. Did well, we've you, been talking about list? it for the past few weeks. I know, but on Friday we were talking more about, and you got annoyed because I was asking, I was talking about countries that hadn't said they would, they would do. So I want to ask now. What well, countries I'm, have. What countries have and what it is they have or if yeah, they haven't can, decided. We can get that yet. full list around, and I'm not sure actually I have it. It's like a 40-page long list. All right. And um, I'm not sure I have it in here, but I will say, just broadly speaking, there are a number of countries who have uh, agreed to provide, and I'm just seeing if I actually have it in here, uh, weapons to the Kurds and the Iraqi security forces, particularly resupply from their own existing stocks. That's been ongoing uh, since we started this uh, air campaign in Iraq. So we can get the full list around to you. And it's an ongoing process. I think we'll continue to see people come out and pledge support to this effort. But they are the same effort. Are you asking, will the Secretary be asking at the Security Council meeting for uh, for, for other for additional? In other words, is this meeting on Friday going to be, is it is it part, is it centered around the coalition building? Or is it rather uh, a broader discussion of, the whole situation. I think it's both. I think it's. Both. Yeah. I think it will be safe to say in every discussion the secretary has about Iraq uh, and the fight against ISIS, particularly, uh, he will be talking about how we are building this broad-based coalition. And last one on coalition: the mm -hmm. Russian foreign minister, your friend Mr. Lavrov, mm -hmm. said today that um, Russia wasn't going to. Russia isn't interested in joining or being part of or contributing to any coalition in against ISIL that doesn't include Iran and the Assad government. What's your response to that? Is it just we said the Assad government won't be part of right. this coalition? Does that mean that you're not? If that's the Russians' condition, does that mean you're not in, interested in Russian Russian participation? Well, we're interested in people who are willing to contribute to this coalition, but we are not interested in the Assad regime being a part of it. Or Iran. They, I'm sorry? He, because he said both Iran and Assad. Correct. So basically, you're not interested in the Russians. Assistance here. They if that's their condition, they come with preconditions. Right. If they say we're tough. not going to do anything to help you out unless <laughs> you allow, about, to be fair, it's not about helping us out. They talk a lot about how about the coalition. I mean, I mean, right. But it, I mean, if they're uninterested in helping the people of Syria and Iraq who are being 
uh, brutalized by ISIS because they have preconditions on that, then they can defend that position publicly themselves. The Iraqi just president said that he regretted <clears throat> that Iran wasn't invited to the Paris conference, given that everything is happening in large part inside his country. Why didn't the Iraqi government have the final say on who got to come to the conference? Well, uh, Iran's participation in the conference uh, this week, we believe, would have been premature. Given the status of our own talks on building a coalition, uh, we're also not aware of an invitation being issued, nor of Iran wishing to accept one. Uh, obviously, this does not mean there won't be future opportunities for Iran to be included in a broad and multi multinational dialogue uh, about this shared threat. So obviously, those are still opportunities, but we didn't think this participation in this conference uh, was appropriate. The conference is going on as we speak, the Iraqi president is there, and, and there will be many of opportunities for everyone to discuss. How is it that the U.S. gets to decide uh, who gets to come to a conference dealing with the security of another sovereign nation? Well, we don't. Uh, again, the French issued invitations, and we are not aware of them issuing an invitation or of the Iranians wanting to accept one. Okay. Can well, I just but it's not a matter of whether or not the Iranians wanted to accept. If the Iraqis think that the Iranians can help them deal with a fundamental security threat, which you yourself have said is also a threat to the Iranian nation, mm -hmm. Why is it that now we have President Barsoom saying it was a mistake for Iran to not be there at the very beginning of what looks to be a protracted fight against ISIL? Well, let's pull his exact comments to see what he said. But again, we're not aware of any invitation being issued to them, nor of them wanting to accept one. There will be plenty of opportunities for all of us to sit down and discuss this. I would note that in March, uh, we joined nearly 30 countries, including Iran, at a counterterrorism conference in Iraq, where we were all there at the table talking together. So there are many ways we can do this, just this wasn't the right But that was six right months time. ago, Marie. I, I and, understand and this the is calendar, and this, and, and this is before the U.S. government and the U.K. government and others decided or acknowledged that ISIL was a much more fundamental security well, threat to the region. Uh, and so really, you, one could argue that the discussions back in March are moot. I was pointing out that we are willing to sit down in a counterterrorism forum and discuss these issues with the Iranians, so just that this conference wasn't the right time. Uh, and again, the French were in charge of invitations. There will be plenty of conferences and discussions, and I'm sure when we're all in New York, there will be as well. So this is not the end-all, be-all of conferences, and I think we should just be careful about so, putting too so, much So just that we're clear, into that. Uh -huh. you are open to the possibility of the Iranians taking part in some form in such a coalition, the only thing you've excluded is military cooperation, No, I right? said to be included in a broad and multilateral dialogue about this shared okay. threat. So you cannot dialogue. see the Iranians taking part in a coalition, whether they, whether it involved military or non-military aspects? You rule if, that out? If they, well, if they have a role to play to fight against ISIL, uh, we can have that conversation, again, going forward and see what that looks like. So you don't rule it out, then? You don't rule it out? I don't have anything else for you on that. Uh, but as the president of the Security Council for the month of September, we are you, the president. Yes, yes, and you have, that comes with privileges. It One does. of those privileges is being allowed to invite whoever you want to sit in on the meeting. I don't Would know. You, I, on Friday? On Friday, I consider a, a, an invitation to the Iranians. Uh, Presumably I the Iraqis, who are not on the Security Council, the Iraqis will be will there. will be there. Right. Considering it's, yes. It is their country, is after their country. all. So. What about an invitation? I haven't to heard Iran? that there will be broader invitations, but let me check with our team at USUN and see. <clears throat> or Syria, for that matter. <clears throat> let me check with our team. Yes. <clears throat> I'm not expecting exactly from this uh, Security Council meeting on Friday. I mean, to come with a resolution or just to raise a consensus? Well, I think to raise concerns, to talk about, again, this is another multi. Uh, lateral forum where we can all sit down and talk about it with a number of key countries here and it's leading into the high-level week at UNGA where the president will be chairing a session on foreign fighters uh, where we will have a number of conversations the secretary will be at the global counterterrorism uh, forum where we'll have a number of conversations about how we can fight this threat so I think this will be a good session where we can put issues on the table talk about it in a place we haven't at this level yet uh, and, and lead into the high-level week at UNGA so, you said, I think you mentioned that it's the meeting will start at 2, 2 p.m. and it will finish that night. Correct. It could be, I mean, these tend to go fairly long, yeah, at I mean, least from my reading of the UN. When is the global counterterrorism forum going to be held? Not, let me see if I have that. I believe it's the 23rd, but let me double check. 
Yes, on September 23rd, Secretary Kerry will co-host with Turkish Foreign Minister, the new Turkish Foreign Minister, the fifth GCTF ministerial. Uh, I was at the one last year. These obviously happened during UNGA. Um, they're an important place for countries to talk about the shared threat from terrorism, including uh, foreign uh, terrorist fighters, uh, kidnapping for ransom, uh, the growth of violent extremism, and other issues as well. Um, Israel is not a participant. So GCTF ministerials are limited to GCTF members. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we are pleased to report that in 2013 they agreed to significantly expand the opportunities for Israel and others uh, who are committed counterterrorism partners. Since then, Israel has been at a bunch of GCTF uh, meetings, but this meeting will only be the founding members. This is 29 countries plus the EU. They're the only ones who participate in ministerial meetings. So Israel will not be there. Okay. Uh Let's just do a couple more on ISIS, yeah. and then I think I have to move on. Prime Minister Netanyahu, like, said that uh, he supports Obama's effort, uh, the president's we've effort. welcomed that. We've he, welcomed that. Yeah, but, but, but the thing is, like, uh, like, how do you see the participation of Israel, like, in the well, coalition? Every country can make their own decisions about how they participate uh, in this broad coalition, whether that's sharing information, whether that's cutting off financing or foreign fighter flows or uh, any of those issues, obviously. They can make their own decisions about how best to. But but ISIS participate. itself like has declared like uh, several times like uh, aggressive like comments ag against Israel. Actually, all Qaeda as well like they mm -hmm. their original plan according to Abu Musab Suri that to surround uh, Israel like to put sleeping cell of, like all around Israel. Well, so. Israel knows it's a threat to the whole region, and again, how they'll participate uh, in this coalition specifically, I'd let them speak to. Mike, can I ask one more on this topic? Um, there are reports that there was a chlorine gas attack in a town called uh, Duluya in Iraq. Are you aware of those reports? I haven't seen them. Okay. I can check on them, but yes. I have one on Ukraine, if that's okay. Last, last on ISIS. Um, Unless you have one. Or, Secretary of State John Kerry said on CBS Face the Nation that he will or we will not coordinate airstrikes with the Assad Correct. government, but we will de-conflict to make certain that they're not about to do something that they might regret even more seriously. What did he mean by that? Well, uh, as he said several times in that interview, we will not, I, this is like I'm a broken record today, uh, we will not uh, be coordinating in any way with the Syrian government. The President has made clear we will hunt down terrorists wherever. Uh, they are if they threaten America. That means we will not hesitate to take action against ISIL in Syria as well in, as Iraq. Uh, we're obviously not going to telegraph our, our plans in advance. Uh, and as the Secretary said during that interview multiple times, we are not and will not be coordinating with the regime. What did he mean by de-conflict? I, mean, I think I just made clear what he meant. And we have to move on. I'm on a little bit of a tight time schedule today. So any last ones on ISIS? Yes. Last one. Going back to the effort to discourage foreigners, especially people in the United States, from jo going over to join ISIS, you mentioned um, reaching out to credible, credible voices mm -hmm. worldwide. There's also the State Department video that was released. Mm -hmm. um, a two-part question. Um, since the release of the video, have you had any initial feedback on whether it is having the intended effect of discouraging people from um, associating with this group? And then secondly, are there other efforts in the works um, mm -hmm. to also discourage people from getting involved? Yeah, and that video you referenced is part of our uh, CSCC efforts here. This has been ongoing for some months now. This was just the latest video. Uh, first it was in Arabic and other languages, and now we're doing it in English, which is, I think, the video mm -hmm. you're referring to. So this is an ongoing effort to um, make clear how brutal ISIL is, uh, to make sure the world sees that. And again, it's a counter-radicalization tool. It's hard to quantify uh, the impact that it has, but we believe it's an important message. Obviously, there are many other uh, credible uh, voices out there on this topic. Yes, Yes, Ukraine. on Ukraine. So today, the military ac exercises rapid trident began mm -hmm. in Ukraine today. I want us to know if you could comment on the timing of these. Well, these have been long pre-planned. This is a U.S.-led military exercise in western Ukraine. I would note nowhere near uh, the conflict zone in eastern Ukraine. Uh, this is an annual exercise. Happens every year, and it was planned. It was planned before Russia's military actions in Ukraine uh, began. Obviously, uh, this is something we've said uh, is important to us to improve interoperability, security, and stability. But nothing to do with what's going on in the east. And so Russia should not interpret this as a response to 
think their so. actions in Not Ukraine. Not at all. It happens every year, long pre-planned, very open and transparent about it. Great. On the same general subject, mm -hmm. yeah, um, the, I want to go back to your opening second statement yeah. from the beginning. On Crimea. Yeah. What uh, the U.S. Did, I, I, correct me if I'm reading if I'm repeating this incorrectly. Uh, U.S. does not recognize the elections um, in Crimea and will not acknowledge them. What what, what is we that? We don't mean? recognize the legitimacy yeah. and will not acknowledge their outcome. Not acknowledge their outcome. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. Um, and I had one more thing about that because it appears that okay. there were the worst violations of the ceasefire have happened yes. uh, now, and I'm wondering what you have to say yeah, about that. The ceasefire is increasingly strained. We strongly condemn the recent surge in separatist attacks against Ukrainian positions around Donetsk over the weekend, particularly the assaults on Donetsk Airport. Additionally, over the weekend, OSCE monitors came under fire and sustained serious damage to their vehicles. These incidents are in violation of the equipments made in the September 5th Minsk Agreement. Uh, it is still holding, although it's increasingly strained. But we believe the party should come back from the brink here and continue holding the ceasefire. I, I ask you, what, what what does it mean if holding, if there are just multiple violations pretty much every day? That would seems to be that it's not holding. It's increasingly strained, and we hope uh, that it doesn't further escalate, and then actually there are steps, steps taken back to de-escalate. All right, um, and then in in Paris, uh, or sorry, up in in New York. Um, are you? Do you expect that the secretary to have any meetings with, uh, or any discussion with Foreign Minister Lavrov about um, the situation I, in Ukraine? Uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, know. Last one on that. Um, the NATO Secretary General, who's leaving at the end of the month, yes, had some pretty harsh words for Russia, saying it violated all sorts of things that mm -hmm. have kept the peace since the end of the Cold War. Do you? You share? Does the administration I, share those? I didn't say, see the full comments. You gave a speech. But yeah. I obviously agree with the general concept. But I didn't see the full comments, okay. so I don't want to endorse every well, single. All right. Well, what's can you outline? What's T and the, dotted I in it? What, what's the general concept that you agree with? Well, what you just mentioned in terms of Russia being in flagrant violation of international law and international norms, uh, the values that uh, led to the founding of NATO uh, are as relevant, if not more relevant, today than they were at the founding. Well, and so there are things that Russia has, its actions have flown in the face of peace, security, stability across uh, Europe, across the continent. Uh, obviously, this is something that we take very seriously, promotion of democracy, civil society, all of those issues which Russia has just ran roughshod over these past few well, months. Okay, I just, I know you're talking about the founding of NATO and NATO principles, but those aren't, ru ru those aren't necessarily Russian principles, right? So, Correct. So, but you would but agree with the general. But they are principles that underline peace and, and stability. And, and, but are you referring at all to the NATO-Russia agreements that have been, that, that, that existed? Are they? I was referring in general to the fact that one of the things that has kept peace and stability uh, to the extent that it has uh, since the end of World War II has been uh, the commitment of countries uh, on the continent to these principles. Just, I think I can do one more. Last if I ask about Crimean, I'll do one, two more. You and then we're, then I'm done. Crimean <laughs> Tatar uh, leader Mustafa Jemilevs, mm -hmm. he's saying that his community, Crimean Tatars, being uh, ethnically cleansed by, by Russians. Well, I spoke at the top about our concern for that community's oh, welfare. Did. I did, yes. Azerbaijan. Yes. Um, Saeed Nouri, the U.S. citizen of Azerbaijani um, origin, was deported from the country last week. He'd mm -hmm. been detained um, in connection to an undisclosed investigation. Mm -hmm. um, shortly before he was deported, um, he spoke out against an explicit video depicting him that had been posted on the internet mm -hmm. saying it was an attempt by the government to discredit him. Um, something similar happened about a year or so ago um, involving an investigative reporter, um, also photos posted mm -hmm. on the internet, and a pro-government newspaper ran an article about this journalist um, attacking her personal life. Mm -hmm. My question is, is there concern that the secret recordings and um, which seem to be for the purpose of blackmail or mm -hmm. intimidation may be a pattern by the government, and and if so, is the State Department um, issuing any kind of protest to the embassy? Well, we are increasingly concerned that the government of Azerbaijan is not living up to its international human rights commitments and obligations and its actions against civil society groups, uh, including in the case 
the case is, but particularly this latest case that you referenced, uh, we have made our concerns clear uh, to them, uh, both publicly and privately. Can I ask one more? One more, yes. Yeah, on uh, Matthew Miller, mm -hmm. um, he was sentenced to uh, six years in uh, prison camp. Do you have any reaction to that? He was. Uh, the alleged actions for which Mr. Miller and the other two U.S. citizens detained in the DPRK uh, were arrested and imprisoned on, of course, would not give rise to arrest or imprisonment in the U.S. or in most other countries around the world. Uh, despite official claims that U.S. citizens arrested there are not used for political purposes, it is increasingly clear that the DPRK seeks to use these U.S. citizens uh, as pawns to pursue its own political agenda. Uh, we have been very clear that they should all be released and returned home. Uh, period. Obviously, we've seen the reports about the sentencing and, and disagree with it. Thank you. I know you released a statement. I wanted to just get you on camera saying this on Benghazi about the recent report that was published in the Daily Signal. Um, okay. It wasn't you that re it wasn't you particularly that released a statement, but it was someone in the press corps. Okay. Um, it was reported by Shell Atkinson in the Daily Signal that now retired Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs Raymond Maxwell witnessed then Secretary of State. Hillary Clinton's staff trying to conceal damaging information in advance of the state's independent investigation of the 2012 Benghazi attacks. The ARB had full and direct access to State Department employees and documents. Any accounts to the contrary, like that one you mentioned, are completely without merit, completely ill-informed. Uh, it was a, These reports show a complete lack of understanding of how the ARB functioned. It collected its own documents directly from anybody. Uh, in the department, uh, there was a department-wide call for information uh, to be given directly to the ARB. That's what happened. Uh, the ARB's co-chairs, uh, Tom Pickering and Admiral Mike Mullen, both public servants of impeccable credentials, have both repeated several times that they had, quote, unfettered access to all the information they needed, period. Thank you.